Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. Here we're going to talk about the moment of a force, but we're going to now talk about it in terms of its vector formulation as a cross product. I've hinted for a long time now that all of these calculations we've been doing to find the moment is really, uh, in the grander scheme, it's really a cross product. So that's why we covered all of that before. So to get you comfortable with this idea, uh, let's just recall um, some, some things that we had talked about in the previous uh, set of lessons here about moments. So I'll draw a quick picture here. What if we have, let me go ahead and change to red to draw the coordinate system. What if we had a, um, a vector, well, let's do it like this. Let's say here is, uh, here's the Z direction, here's the X direction, and then over this way is the Y direction. So here is, of course, Z. Okay, so now let's say that I have uh, a, um, a force or I should say a force acting at some point here. So let's say the distance from the origin, okay, is called R, and that's a vector, and here's the origin. So here's some big point here at the center of the universe or whatever, we construct some coordinate system. All right, now let's say that acting at this point, you can imagine R to be a piece of wood or something, or if it helps you to visualize it as a piece of wood or a piece of metal or something. And then acting at this point, more or less in this direction is some force, okay? Acting right at that point, and that's some force F. And of course, it's acting at some angle theta uh, to, to the, uh, to the uh, vector R. So this angle theta, in general, uh, could be any angle at all. So what it basically is saying is, if you're trying to figure out how an arbitrary force is going to cause a moment about some axis of rotation that's denoted there, then what you need to know is three things. You need to know what is the force vector? It's direction and magnitude. That's given by the arrow. And you need to know how, what the angle is between that and the distance vector from the, where I'm trying to rotate to, which is governed by this guy. Now we've said before that you already know if this is a piece of metal here and I'm directing a force like this, then it's going to tend to spin the thing around. And we know from the right hand rule that if we curl our hands in the direction that this is going to attempt to rotate R, if you kind of consider F to be in the plane, in the XY plane here, then this thing's going to spin like this. And from the right hand rule, the moment is going to be uh, oriented straight up. So the way that we typically write that is we say that the moment vector is oriented up like this, and it's basically spinning in this direction, and we call that M0, or M uh, sub O, and it's a vector as well. So the actual moment vector, notice, is oriented perpendicular to the plane that contains these two vectors here. So this is like a sheet of paper. The R vector and the F vector that's pushing on it, they're in this plane here. The moment actually comes out of the page like that, and I've drawn an arrow to signify the thing is rotating like this. Now this is all more or less review, stuff that you should have remembered from before, uh, but just go a step further, remember that the moment about the origin here that we're talking about here, or at least the magnitude of it, if you remember, it's going to be F times D, right? But we've said many times that it's not just F, it's the component of F perpendicular to the moment arm that we've been talking about this whole entire time, right? We've done that enough times. So basically it's the distance here from here to this point where the force is applied, okay? And then we have to take into account that there's some angle here, right? So what we say is F times the sine of theta, okay? And this F sine theta is perpendicular. It's F perpendicular to R. So if you kind of think about